All right, guys, so this is my Cub Cadet ST100 field trimmer and uh, field string trimmer. And uh, I got it out last weekend, fired it up, put brand new gas in. I always, at the end of the season, get the gas, uh, uh, take mo suck most of it out of the tank. <coughs> we'll run it <clears throat> and until it stops. And then I take the bowl and ju I'll just make sure it's all out of the bowl. And then after every time that I use it during the year, I, w I put this shutoff valve in. And I'll run it until the curb is <clears throat> out of fuel and it stops. Well, it didn't want to start. So, uh, what I did, I don't know if you can see it right here in the air cleaner with all my small engines. I'll drill a small 3 16 inch hole. And if by chance <clears throat> they don't start, I'll take a little starting fluid, just spray it in the hole. If it starts, and stops I tried that a couple times you know it's fuel delivery something with the delivery of fuel somewhere in the lines in the carb whatnot and so that's what led me to having <clears throat> to put on a, a new carb now you might be asking well why don't you just take the carb and try to clean it well I did and I'll show you why that was not possible so I'm going to show you the process that I do to remove the carb whether you're going to clean it or put a new one on this is how I do it if you've got gas in the tank you're going to want to if you don't have a shutoff valve that you that you put in like I did here you're going to want to pinch off the line with the holes uh, pincher somehow or when you pull the fuel uh, holes from the carb make sure you have something to stick in the end of it either way so you don't have just a constant flow of fuel coming out of your tank all right so I'm going to take the air cleaner cover and filter off and it's got tabs up here you just push down like that there's your air cleaner filter I'm just going to take that and I'll pull that off Next, what I'm going to do is just pull this top cover off, and it's very simple. It's got a tab here and a tab back there. Just push in on the side like that. Comes right off. Next, we have three of these, like, acorn-type uh, nuts with flanges on them, and that's going to require a 10-millimeter um, socket. And so I'm just going to use my quarter inch drive set because you don't need a lot of torque. So I'm just going to use my quarter inch drive set. Loosen those up. And then we're going to take all three of those off. Once that is done, we're going to pull this top piece off. Lift straight up. And then we'll just hang this over to the side. This has your, your recoil start. So that will just put it up by the um, handle there and you'll be fine this next section has your fuel tank the shroud and then the fuel tank and there's a reason why I'm doing this doing it this way so we're just gonna pull this up like this and we'll just keep this to the side kind of just like that now the reason that I pull that piece off there is because once I pull this off I'll show you is the best way I found to do this without when pulling the car without chancing this piece of linkage getting bent is taking out these two bolts and removing this so that uh, there's no chance of bending this next I'm going to remove this um, cover here that actually holds your uh, air filter housing and so I'm going to pull these three that also requires a 10 millimeter socket Okay, that's a bolt and then these two are just nuts so 
So as we pull this off, you're going to have a hose here and a hose down below. This pulls off real easy. You don't even need to really, you could pull that back, but I find that it, it comes off. Well, we'll pull this back a little bit. Pull this off. And then you've got a hose down below here. And I'm going to take a screwdriver. That comes off a little harder. And just pull up on this, working it up and down and getting it off that hose barb. Just like that. Next I'm going to pull this gasket. Lay it down. I'm going to take this piece right here, pull it off, and make note of how it's connected. You know, with uh, your cell phone cameras and, 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 and uh, your digital cameras today, it's so easy. If you're not sure, take a picture of it ahead of time before you take things apart. And then I'm just going to take this and set it aside just like that. And there's a gasket on the back side. Next, I'm going to pull the fuel uh, supply hose. And I, I put a, here's the original clamp. I put a small hose clamp on it. Don't have to. That's just what I did. And I'll just work that off. Of course, there's your gasoline that's still left in the hose. Now, here's where we come to the part where you see this linkage. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to disconnect the linkage back here first before I do this and, uh, so that I can show you better why I took the top piece off to get to those. Here's a close-up of what I'm talking about. We'll be taking these two bolts out which allows this plate containing this. I'm not really sure what this thing does. I think it's the air vein comes across here. Anyways, and so the way it's linked right here, it's very simple. But when you try to pull the carb off, there's not enough play with this. And you're going to damage or bend that linkage. So what I'm going to show you next first is taking off this small spring here and the linkage here. that solid rod so we're gonna do that now to take that little small wire out what I do is I'll pull back and very simply get underneath of it like this and pull up just like that Re really easy then I'm gonna pull back on this and then just as I'm pulling back just bend it just a little bit there you go just like that and it, it comes out now let me show you what I'm talking about here if we don't pull this. You go to pull the carb, and as you can see, you've got these two studs sticking out. You cannot get it out. You just can't. There's no way to get this out because it goes down and then it comes over in here. So, like I said, the best thing, and this will require a 10 millimeter, what I do is I'll get in here like this, loosen them both. And then just get those out of there. And let's see. I'll just kind of do one of these numbers to get that. Well, I guess I'll have to... to get in there so now it's just a simple matter of taking this like that as one unit and get my hand out of the way pull it up in the air 
like that and you work out work that out of where it, and put that aside where it comes out of the carb now you just simply take the carb pull it off so let me show you what I was talking about as to why I was not able to clean it which is what I initially wanted to do this will require a 10 millimeter tool to get this apart I'm gonna have some gas in here so let me uh, there we go well let me get rid of that gas first here okay so <clears throat> as you can see and this was terrible I mean there was rust as soon as I pulled that rust came pouring out of of this obviously I put my new gas in so the new gas uh, filled the bowl and I've never seen anything like this before I mean it was terrible just tons of just gas this is all rusted up and I tried to pull the main jet in there and I even used some uh, uh, liquid in there to kind of um, see if I couldn't get that loose and um, it just wouldn't some penetrating oil it just would not take care of it and I was just more or less damaging the main jet there so I couldn't get to it so that's why I decided just to buy a new carb and seeing what I did anyways I definitely wanted a new carb because I don't want all that rust and stuff going into the engine so one of the issues I had was that was so gunked up and, and rusted in there is that normally I'll just take this small screwdriver like this and you can stick it in there and even though it doesn't fit perfect you can catch it and rotate it off well I didn't have anything that was narrow enough to catch both sides of that lip in there and so what I decided to do was get a screwdriver and modify it so here's what I bought it's a Craftsman 3 16 flat blade CMHT 65021 and I'm going to take this tip and narrow it. Just take it on the grinder and narrow the width of the blade. Not the, not the tip, but the width here, the sides. So that way it can fit down in here and span. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let me do that first. So here's what I did. I did this on my belt sander and I did not want to get into the tip at all so I've not changed the configuration I just wanted to take the sides down so that way it, and you can see the slot there so that way it could fit in here now it's it's fitting nice and snug just like it should I'm gonna try something not that it matters cuz yeah it's just seized so anyways, that's what I'm going to do for future reference, and then I'll just uh, mark this screwdriver as for uh, working on carburetors, the small carbs, because they're all basically the same. This will fit any, any carb main jet. So if we take a look at the PDF, the parts manual, we'll see that the complete carb is item 130. we go down here to 130 and we see that the um, part number for a 130 the complete carb is a 951-14423 carburetor assembly here we see it on Amazon where I bought it and in, in, in a week it went down a dollar I paid $25.99 but this is it the originals on the left the new carbs on the right
Now this new carb came with gaskets, but you know what? The old gaskets are fine. I'm going to put them back on and just leave these as spares. Okay, let's get this put back together. Put that on like that. I'm going to now put this linkage on and you'll want to get it over where the hole is. Hold back on that and hold down on the top and just push over a little bit till that goes down. Then we're going to take the spring, we're going to gently Well, I've got my camera in the way. Makes it a little bit harder for me to see here. Just like that. Next, we're going to put this other piece on. And what I'm going to do is go down like that. And just like that, that simple. Then we shall install the two bolts here to tie that together. Next, let's hook up our fuel line. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is put this linkage on, and as you recall, that had to go through there like that, and, let's see, and like that. You want to make sure that that uh, tab, if you can see that there, when that moves, that is pushing that wire, that linkage, that way. All right, the next thing is going to be our gasket. Next, let's put that uh, air cleaner shroud back on. And so what we need to do is take this hose, put it on that hose barb, and then take that hose and put it on that hose barb. And then we'll, we'll put our two nuts on here and our bolt in there. So I think I'll go ahead and put the uh, air filter and the cover on also next. All right, we're going to attach our shroud with the fuel tank attached. You want to make sure these lines here are pushed up in here like that. Next, we're going to take our recoil housing here, start our start housing here. that on 
and put the cap nuts back on. And to put the icing on the cake, we'll put the top cover on. Here you see the tab here that goes in here. And then the tab back there that goes in there. You just got to fish your line here in it like that. Very simple. Get the front end. We're ready to fire it up. Still fuel in here. Fresh fuel that I put in from last week. All the components are back on. Let me go ahead and open up that fuel valve. I'm just going to run my hand under here for any leaks. I don't feel any. All right, time to fire it up. All right, let's see what happens. Beautiful, first pull, just like it always did. So I thought I'd just show you this, guys, in case you ever came up against this situation. Very, very simple to change that carb. Don't pay somebody to do it. You can do it yourself. And uh, like I said, I always try to clean them. And 99%, uh, well, always 100% of the time that works. But in this case, even though, like I said, it was all rusted up, there's no way in hell that I was going to keep that carb. And the best thing was just to buy a new one anyways. Because you don't want to get any dirt and stuff in your engine. If anybody knows what that was, I've never seen that before. That, that rust, like, never. Does anybody know what that might be? Because, again, I drain the fuel out of the system at the end of the season. And again, after each use, each time I use this, I always take the, sh the valve, shut it off like that, and run the engine until it stops. Next time I go to use it during the season, just open that valve back up. I do the same thing all the time, and I always try to have, well, I always have fresh fuel. So, now, one thing I did do, a buddy of mine alerted me of a place locally that sells ethanol free gasoline so that is what i'm going to be running exclusively in my small engine equipment 